You're right, guys, and welcome to the latest episode of Muscle Owl Talks Late Night Edition. We thought we'd basically just do a quick update for the SMA community, for, well, just anyone who's really interested in drug approvals and getting drugs through, because, I mean, it affects the DMD community, it affects a lot of other communities, and to be honest, it'll affect sort of everyone soon when we have drugs for everything that can't get through. So, Nisi Nursing, now... The drug Spinoza got approved by the EMA a while back. We're right so far. That's right. For use in Europe. And we're all pleased because it's being used in America right now. So we were looking forward to it. It can treat SMA types 1, 2, and 3. And it got approved for types 1, 2, and 3. It and can basically treat any standard SMA. Or at least that's what the doctors call it. Yes. For any more than a 5Q dilution. Not that I'm entirely sure what that means, but any moment that the solution can, can be treated effectively by this nursing. So if you're like me and born before 1991, 1992, you will probably need to know the test to, to clarify what your genes are. Um, so yeah, any moment that's under SMA. But there's been a spanner in the wheels. So we expected next step. Nice approval on the, you know, out on the NHS, everything else. Party, party, party poppers, all the rest of it. What's going on? Uh, I think to understand what's going on, I need to go back to before approval. Before uh, this nursing kind of really went full scale into a phase three trial, and the researchers at Biogen noticed that there was really strong correlations between the drug and marked improvements and marked changes in the disease course. So they, they call it a disease modifying drug that changes the course of the of the condition. And this was from type one children, type one children who were getting the, the drug missing early. Some of them were walking upstairs. The results really are incredible from that group of people. And they decided to make the drug available free of charge to anyone with type one SMA um, because their prognosis is so poor. Um, during the expanded access program. So the expanded access program has been operational here since around January time, since shortly after the FDA approved it in America. But as of today, Australia Industry, Hay, the SMA Trust, uh, and a few other charities have said that there are 70 children in the UK not receiving Spinraza through the expanded access program because of the cost associated with delivering the drug. So children who have type 1? Or are these just children with any? Because if, if, if they were children with type 2 as well, then I'd say, well, why aren't you included in that number? Is it just children? What's... Okay, so the expanded access program only applies to, to children with type 1. This will have repercussions for us, I believe, personally, because we're, we're at a point where there's a relatively small number of children who are eligible for this. And it's all in children's hospitals, by and large, and there's no real major conditions for, for any mom with any other type or really who's older. We don't really have any type one children who are older, other than two or three that I can think of off the top of my head. So it's really them. Um, there's nothing really for me at the moment. Mm. But we are edging closer to approval. The European Commission has approved it now. So we're, I think, I believe we're now at the stage where nice um, when we hit drug and evaluate it. Yeah. But, well, it just seems like a bit of a strange situation where we're coming close to approval from NICE, but the expanded access program is stopped. Basically, this comes from how we get the drug in. The drug is delivered into the spinal cord, um, so that it's got a direct delivery to the spinal cord. Um, SMA affects a number of things, but one of the primary areas where it does affect is some neurons in the spinal cord, in the spinal cord and the brainstem. Um, in particular, the brainstem. So the most logical place to give any drug is in that area, and I can understand that. But obviously there's risks and medical issues associated with that, one of which being that you, know, you need a, what is essentially a lumbar puncture every time you get the drug, and you, know, you get two doses in the first two weeks, um, and six doses within the first year. You get four loaded doses in order to actually get you up to the point where you know your the drug is functional and then you have to get maintenance doses. So it is intensive. You do have to get a lot of a, a lot of procedures done. And that means going to theater for, for most children and and stand up after such a you know, for a certain period of time and 
associated with often mechanics or an impression of the spinal spinal cord. So, so which side is holding up here? Is it the hospitals and the doctors saying this is too much? No, or is it the families just of the seventy children not going ahead with things? No, the families most certainly want the drug. Um, mm. I'm in the middle of my kind of evaluation in anticipation of approval because it's, it is coming. But I think this is where money comes into play, cautiously, but also capacity. You know, when you think of, of these sorts of procedures, they're standard in someone like you who can, has a straight spine. For people with SMA, their spine is quite often not quite what it should be. It doesn't look like a normal spine. Um, certainly my spine does not look like a normal spine. So it's the trickiness of getting that in there. It's you know, finding the theatre space and the staff to do it is it, quite tricky. And I know that was initially the problem in Northern Ireland and the health minister intervened and found some way around of doing it. Mm. So we have four children in, on it in Northern Ireland through the expanded access programme, which is great. I know some of the families personally and you know, it's great to see Good to see good results there so far, but it's a uh, it's a tricky situation. I can understand why there's a problem mm. with capacity, but if we're having that problem now, yeah, we need to address it quickly because yeah. in you know, six or eight months down the, down the line, we could have approval yeah. from nice and NHS England, and people like me are going to show up and say, "Right, well, where's mine? Where's yeah. my nurses?" And that's what causes a problem. No, absolutely. Uh, so if it's being held back at the moment, what are the causes for this? Is, is, is it finance? And is this then therefore not the same scenario with usual drugs that we see when we talk about managed access programs uh, where the drug company will pay for the children to have the drug? Is, is this the scenario that the drug company are paying for the children to have the drug, but they're not paying for the, the theatre operation procedures? I mean, if you think of Translarna, because it's really the only example we have to draw on, um, Translarna is a pill. Um, you take it, you swallow it, you go on about your day. Um, Translarna, atalurin for a form of Duchenne muscular dystrophy for all those who don't know. Yeah, so I mean, it's, it's what I would call a low maintenance drug. You can pop it and go on about your day. Spinraza is a drug that takes up your whole day just for one dose and you know you get multiple doses a year so I can see how that is both time, it has time constraints but it also has resource constraints on it. I don't know that that's finance because obviously the drug is being provided free of charge. The drug itself will be very expensive. We don't have UK prices yet but based on the the American exchange rate it works out about half a million per patient each year. So it is an extremely expensive drug, but that's going to be incredibly cost effective in the long term. Mm. And we give that to, to the right people and we're going to, you know, we're going to have marked, marked improvement and, you know, people who are able to live their lives much longer, much healthier. Mm. Um, but at the same time, I'm not entirely sure where that issue comes from. I do know some of it is, kind of cost and where they find that money to to things together but I don't think it's so really cost. Mm. I think it's a matter of finding theater space, finding doctors and this who can who can do what they need to do and really work first as well. Yeah. It has to be given with a a scan at the same time so they can make sure they're giving it into the right right part of the spine. Wow. So where do we expect this to lead? When's the next set of updates? You know, what, what's a muscular dystrophy going, UK going to take action on this? Or is it simply, voila? Uh, muscular dystrophy UK are calling for a series of meetings, um, or at least a meeting, to sort out this, the cost aspect of the problem, to try and sort out this, the, the capacity issues and get people treated. I think one of the biggest things we need to keep in mind right now is that some children are being treated in Paris and they're, they're traveling to Paris. Paris are now removing children from the UK from their program because they, they can't keep up with the demand. Um, you know, and to be honest, you know, you have to travel to another country to get a drug that's available here for free. Um, so we need to, we need, we need to ask quickly and I must read this to you and other SMA charities are 
I call on for that to happen fast. At the end of the day, I have time to read about and look about and try what's best for me. And other people have that luxury too, but for children with type 1 time is of the essence. You know, some only, 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 only survive a few weeks. Mm. You know, and we, we don't have that time um, and that luxury for, for those families. So my thoughts are very much with them at this point because they lose treatment out there and they just have access to it. And that's particularly hard for me to see. You know, we're, we're losing kids all the time. You know, a friend of mine, her, her son died just a few weeks ago. And that hit me really hard because that was the first one that had died that um, was in Spinoza, so it was mm. just for me. So yeah, it's, uh, I think where we need to go from here is get a meeting together, get some heads together, find the solution and discuss what we're going to do if NICE approves it, not when NICE approves it. Um, mm. I think we need to have a plan in place so that when all the adults come along and all the ones with type 2 and type 3 come along, mm-hmm. that we have things in place so that people can be treated properly fast. Mm, no, absolutely. And I think we could see, well, certain different resolutions coming depending on what happens in the election next week. <laughs> yeah, I think I, it's actually pretty, I haven't thought of it that way. We could have a very interesting week next week in terms of what happened, you know, in the NHS, it's a big bump around. Yeah. Um, you know, and we, we depend on it so much. So yeah, we'll, we'll wait and see what happens. Definitely. And we'll be keeping you up to date with, well, some Muscle Owl Talks episodes about the different party manifestos and what we think could be best for, you know, from each one. So keep updated and yeah, remember to like, subscribe, follow all the rest of it. We're on iTunes podcast. If you're watching this, we're on Facebook. If you're listening to this and we'll catch you again real soon. And thanks for watching. Thanks guys. Bye bye.